That recent election appeared critical to both sides, and for two months, its outcome was in real doubt. The reason? This summer, the Rajneeshis began inviting the faithful to come to the ranch and study. And in the fall, they launched a campaign of nationwide recruiting, busing homeless men and women to the ranch where they were promised free food, housing and clothes, no strings attached. Oh yeah, somebody was telling me about that. They say somebody was going to work on a farm, though. They don't have to stay if they don't like to. We're also offering return transportation. They know drugs there, right? Yeah, no, no drugs. You can't drink? Well, you, you get, get two, two beers, beers a day. Two beers a day? Yeah, yeah. you get okay. two beers. Outsiders thought it was peculiar. Bhagwan had always preached against charity. Many times people have asked me questions about charity. And I said, we don't believe in charity because it humiliates people. We have now in three years become self-sufficient, as you, you can see. We say, come in, be part of us. Hey, Jane, more Yeah, great, great. Hey, babe, how you doing? The Rajneeshis called the effort sharing. But in the Dalles, people noticed the only homeless invited in were citizens 18 and over. As long as you're a U.S. citizen, 18 years of age on election day, and you're a resident of the state of Oregon for 20 days, you can register to vote. The influx of people out there, uh, I, can, I can see no reason other than uh, their, their desire to take over Wasco County. Not so, answered the Rajneeshis. The idea of the homeless electing Rajneeshi write-in candidates had never occurred to them. Not until it was suggested by a reporter. I never thought of it. It still doesn't sound like a good idea. It sounds like a hell of an idea. It's your politician and your media is creating for them to vote. We never even thought of them voting. To have said any different would have been an admission of criminal conspiracy. Later, Sheila would explain voting was something forced on her. I got accused of it that because I invited you, that was because I wanted to take over the county and the politics. I tell you, the county is so f***ing bigoted, it deserves to be taken over. And finally, there was no question of intent. 6,000 people had come to Rajneesh Param, and Sheila told them they had a purpose. When do we vote? 6th of November, you don't. Yeah. And I guarantee you there will be people to help you to vote and explain to you which are the good candidates, which are the candidates who are good. Sheila may have guaranteed the homeless they would vote, but election officials made sure it wouldn't be easy. Wasco County demanded they prove their eligibility in compulsory hearings at the Dalles. It was a 200-mile round trip for the thousands of potential registrants, a requirement the Rajneeshis called outrageous. Close to voting day, the two Rajneeshi candidates for the county commission angrily dropped out. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of that kind of government. It's beneath my dignity to run for office and to vote in this election. And I won't participate in it. And in a statement most Oregonians still don't believe, Ma Anand Sheila held a news conference to announce the promise of voting. Everything she told both the media and the homeless, it had all been a joke. I have no interest in any elections and I'm not interested in the county either. But unfortunately, you don't understand my sense of humor. Thelma Strong, 320. The Rajneeshis chose to boycott the election. The rest of Wasco County did not. They voted in record numbers, and the winners, the new Wasco County commissioners, they have their own theory on what happened. You think the uh, homeless program was simply an effort to take over Wasco County? Yes. Why do you think it failed? They evidently didn't have enough people to get the job done. I think they brought them in to, uh, to use them as, uh, as a voting uh, instrument. And then when things kind of uh, started to deteriorate, then they saw that they didn't have the numbers to do it. No one likes to get defeated, and they kind of backed off. The number of people at the ranch, 2,000 residents, 
2,000 faithful from across the country called in for a Buddha field experience. And 4,000 homeless bust in. Together, they probably were enough to turn the election in Wasco County. But by election day, half the homeless were gone. Some left by choice, others not. Dropped off at bus stations in Madras, the Dalles, and Portland, many leaving had little good to say about the Rajneesh experience. It tells me they're taking away my... They tell me I'm working with no pay, no social security, no workers' compensation. See, it says right there, it's all a bunch of double talk. Before you have sex with anyone, on there's, like I said, there's a lot of homosexuals, yeah. a lot of lesbians there. But even if you want to have sex, if you're straight it's and you want like to have prison. sex, you have to wear gloves. I mean, they, they make everything that's supposed to be decent filthy. So all they're doing is they're worshiping Satan. Pay them what? They ought to be paying me. They wanted people to work for nothing. Oh. We don't have no TV, no newspaper, no nothing. People, uh, people, people not supposed to carry any money. And uh, we, it's just uh, like a concentration camp in Iowa, see? Because right after the voting's over, they're going to kick everybody out anyway. Did they say that? That's the words around. You know, they didn't actually come out and say it, but they, you know, the words around. That's all they want us up there for is the voting. They almost had me. They almost had me convinced. They're with their subtle love, their subtle, you know, gifts. Uh, you come back to your bed and you got all these brand new clothes, you know, laying on your bed, these gifts. Uh, if you're bummed out or something about something, they all hug you and give you all these loves and hugs, but it's all phony. It's phony. <laughs> you know? Who'd you feed? Oh, bummer. Those who stayed at Rancho Rajneesh were changed. In two visits, in random conversations with street people just six weeks apart, the changes were obvious. This was Andre Thomas, 21 years old and bus to the ranch from Washington, D.C. He was a self-described city boy working with animals and loving it. Have you thought about becoming a Rajneesh? Rajneesh? Yeah, in a way. But then, no, you know, I, it's hard to say. I, it's a lot I don't know about it, right? So I couldn't just jump into something I don't know about. That was mid-September. Meet him today. My name used to be Andre. My name's Govan Anarag now. Mm -hmm. Sinyasin. I got a model. Mm -hmm. Why did you do it? What, uh, what made you make this decision? Well, it was like, I kept thinking, but I said, oh, come on, what do you do? And I just said, go for it, you know? It's no... Should I, should not, you know, the moment was there, the opportunity was there. They said, if you want to take Sinyasin, you know, you can take it. I said, well, I don't know. I was, uh -huh. then I said, oh, hell, I'm just going to go for it. You know, I just went for it. This was Calvin Gatewood, as we saw him in September. Totally sold on the Share a Home project with no plans to ever go back to the streets of Chicago. How do you like it? Beautiful. I wouldn't return for nothing to Chicago. I wouldn't return. Today, Calvin Gatewood is Swami Nicholas. What happened, though, that we find you with a new name and a, and a new religion? Oh, yeah, it's been a while, ain't it? I told you. Uh, I decided to give it a try. When we first met Calvin Gatewood, he was wearing an orange bead around his neck that showed he was a new arrival, still undergoing medical tests. Now, he wears a mala. What does it mean to you? Uh, well, the beads mean 108 meditations. Yeah. Various meditations. You know what the blue one means, naturally. No, I don't. You don't? What? Oh, the blue ones means that I am sick free, Jack. You know, in other words, no health problems. I am totally safe. Has that done you any good up here? Are you kidding? I beg for this. <laughs> I beg for this for the longest that I get it now, Jack. Now I don't have to worry about the women looking. Hey, you got an orange bee, you got weight on hell, you know. This was Roger Lloyd Sullivan of Apache Junction, Arizona. In September, he told us he was ready to convert as soon as the Rajneeshis would have him. If, if I had to leave, I'd be crying all the time because I love it here and this is my new home and this is where I'm going to live for the rest of my life. We have no explanation, but Roger Lloyd Sullivan is no longer at the ranch. Don Hogue from San Diego, who admitted he was skeptical, but not sure why. If it's a scam, it's probably the most subtle scam I've ever seen in my life. Don Hogue is gone, too. And Orlando Smith, another man out of Chicago. We talked to him in September. What is it don't like out here? I mean, you got everything you want here, you know? They just, hey, come on, we give it to you. There's so much love here. That's what a lot of people miss, that love, you know, the love and affection. Out here, they give it to you. They pour it on you. So what else do you want, why you want to leave? We found Orlando Smith, still calling himself Orlando Smith, waiting in line for the Bhagwan's drive-by. Are you going to put on the red clothes? Are you going to wear a mala? Um, 
I wear the red clothes, you know, but they're in the laundry now, so uh, I'm thinking about going up for my mother, you know, but I'm not quite ready for it yet. While he's still not ready to convert, Orlando is happier than ever before. Outside, he says he'd be sleeping in missions or under bridges. Here, he has a place to sleep and three meals a day, and his time divided between Rajneeshi counseling sessions and work. He's about to be assigned a job as a gardener. Here, he's finding a place. I have no uh, commitments to my family. You know? They just something in the past, and I got a new family. In the sea of faces that now work and worship at Rajneeshpuram, one in three is a former street person. Some you can still recognize by their clothing, but more and more of them now dress only in red and wear the beaded necklace. We're assured by the Rajneeshis that the number leaving the ranch has slowed to a trickle. The population is leveling out and expected to hold at about 4,000. told the temporary tents are being abandoned, that the homeless are being moved to permanent buildings. 600 of them will settle in the new housing in nearby Rajneesh Antelope, but all of them will be part of the new Rajneeshi community. Most of my family, they would think I'm a little kooky now. They think, you know, ah, oh, you're going to be a slave for the rest of your life now. You know, you're branded, ah, oh, blah, 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 blah. But, ah, uh, hey, if they could come up here, you know, and stay for like maybe a month or something, they feel the same way I feel. I'm sure anybody, you know, it's, it's just not for you can look at in the, inside a TV screen and say, oh, wow, it looks like this, it looks like that, you know? It's not like that at all. Andre Thomas, the new Swami Anurag, says of the 23 people who came in with him on the bus from Washington, D.C., 17 are still here, and all but two of those have now converted to Rajneeshism. Anurag has a job cleaning garbage cans in Rajneeshpuram. Orlando Smith will work in the nursery. Swami Nicholas works with the hoe, cleaning and weeding. They are three of 2,500 newcomers who are confident they're on their way to finding acceptance in work, in dress, and in faith. Acceptance oh, both socially and sexually. How long do you think you'll end up staying here? Rest of my life. This, they ain't got no place else to go, you know. I don't want to go back out there in the world because nothing out there for me. How long do you think you'll be living here? Actually, all my life. All my life. I'll be here forever, man, you know, it's, it's, I don't care if I'm shoveling dog down, you know, it don't matter, I, I'll be here for as long as I can be here, you know, no way to go, man, no way, no place, this is the city right here, you know, it's, yeah. Outside Rajneeshpuram, there is still suspicion that with the election over, the remaining street people will be dumped as quickly as possible. Sheila says that won't happen. Again, it's individual. If they accept the life which is offered here and don't get into the old habit, they can stay here for eternity. <clears throat> Do you expect most of them to stay? I don't even expect all Rajneeshis to stay here. And I'm sure Until this month, what we were told about the Rajneeshis and their plans, we heard from Mahanand Sheila. But the day the Rajneeshi homeless gave up their plans to vote in the Wasco County election, was also the day the Bhagwan chose to end his silence. He now meets with small groups of Rajneeshis, offering nightly discourses he calls his Rajneesh Bible. I have always loved the American Constitution. And now I feel it would have been better if I had not come here because now I am feeling absolutely disappointed. That constitution is bogus. These words, individual, freedom, capitalism, freedom of expression, are all just words. 
A month ago, Ma Nan Sheila confessed to a mass gathering of Rajneeshis that Bhagwan was a little disappointed with her. The problem, she said, Bhagwan doesn't see me as fiery as I should be. Maybe you all will help me become as fiery. If Sheila's been too soft-spoken, now we have her teacher, once silent, now ready to speak his mind. They want that this city should be demolished because of their land use laws. And none of those idiots has come to see how we are using the land. Can they use it more creatively than we are using it? And for 50 years nobody was using the land, they were happy. That was good use. Now we are creating out of it, we are a self-sufficient commune, we are producing our food, our vegetables, our fruits, we are making every effort to make it self-sufficient. If this is against land use laws, then your land use laws are bogus and should be burnt. In three remarkable years, working without break and spending upwards of a hundred million dollars, the followers have delivered their master his dream of his first sannyasin city. The question is, can he keep it? We can't say how that question will be answered, but it is clearly important enough a decision here in Oregon that even a Bhagwan wants a word in it.